Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the session. And uh, we'll begin in a minute. So thank you all. Good afternoon, thank you all, and I appreciate your joining. And uh, one minute, and we'll start our session today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining the session. I appreciate that. Okay, so let us begin. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining the session. Um, and uh, let's continue with our next topic. So today's topic is related to planning, conception-based planning. So what we have done so far, we have done purchasing, we have done inventory management, we have done warehouse management. And now this is our next topic, which we call conception-based planning. Conception-based planning is not production planning. So we have production planning, and that production planning is a separate topic. Production planning is a part of production. What we are talking about here is conception based planning so three words conception based planning 
So conception based planning is normally being used for planning C class, D class items. So normally you have a maintenance item, repair item, operational items, so regular consumable items which is not necessarily going into the production, which is being used in the company for various other regions. For example, for the region of maintenance, for the region of repair, for the region of running operations. So many such regions, we need a lot of material items. For those kind of materials and items in SAP, we can use conception-based planning. So all these notes which I'm giving, you can make a note of those points as well, and uh, you can keep writing these points as well. So when we talk about conception-based planning, in that there are three material requirement planning procedure three planning procedure tells me how the planning should be done so material requirement planning mrp will tell how the planning would be done how part okay so there is a how part of it Then we have something other than, that, other than that, and we will talk about uh, what are these three planning procedures are. So among the planning procedures, we should uh, make note that is something called reorder point planning procedure. Now, all these different procedures are assigned to the material master in MRP view. In the material master, there is an MRP view. And then in the material master, in the MRP view, we assign these planning procedures, all of them. Now, how do we assign, where it is being assigned? That we will talk, that exercise we have, and that exercise we're gonna discuss, we're gonna do. So first and foremost is a reorder point planning procedure and uh, it is VB. VB is the key which is assigned in Metal Master. The second is forecast-based planning procedure. Okay. In the forecast-based planning procedure, you are basically doing the forecasting based upon the past conjunction. That is the second procedure. And you then assign that procedure also in the material master. The third one is, third um, uh, MRP procedure is called time phased planning procedure. And that key for the time phased planning procedure is R1. So VV is a, uh, the key which is assigned to reorder point planning in material master. VV is a uh, time phase planning procedure which is assigned in material master. R1 is a uh, procedure which is assigned in a material master. Now, when we talk about reorder point planning procedure, in the reorder point planning procedure, there are actually two categories. One, if you see here, is the manual. And the second one is automated. Now, what is the meaning of them and what are the difference? So when we talk about uh, manual reorder point planning procedure, in this case, what happens is, in this case, what happens is, we have something called reorder level and reorder point. Okay, so we have something called reorder level and reorder point. So reorder level and reorder point and the safety stock 
are maintained by the user manually in the material master so that basically means user business user on the basis of his and her understanding of the conception of that material okay i consume this material 100 pieces and this 5000 pieces this is 2000 pieces this is only five pieces so the person who is working in a warehouse they have an idea that how much of that item how much of that material is being consumed okay so in manual reorder point planning procedure and as it is a manual reorder plant planning procedure that reorder label and reorder point and safety stock are maintained by the user manually in material master how do we do that we going to see that we going to do this exercise now the second one here we call it reorder point planning procedure so in the reorder point planning procedure basically means automatic reorder point because this is automatic in this case reorder label reorder point and safety stock are maintained by the sap system automatically so sap system knows how much this item has been consumed how much this item has been consumed how much this item has been consumed because every items consumption history is there in sap and because items history is there in sap therefore sap knows how much an item has been consumed so what system does that on the basis of reorder label reorder point and safety stock of the material system automatically set up reorder label reorder point on the basis of past consumption history so system take past consumption history and on the basis of that past consumption history system automatically set up reorder label reorder point and safety stock in the material master so that is the fundamental primary difference between the two in one case it is done by the user in second case it is done by the business okay so that is the primary difference between the two okay then we have a second one so here we have the second point that is called the forecast based planning so this is the reorder point planning in which we have two planning procedure one is the manual second one is automatic and the next one is the forecast based plan 
In the forecast based planning, what system do? In this case, system uses historical values and forecast values and then on the basis of historical values and forecast values system determine future requirement you can say okay tell me in the last uh, 12 month what is my forecast has been and what is my conception has been then based upon my last six months last six weeks last 12 weeks last 12 months whatever the time period is we can determine the future requirement based upon integrated forecasting program in material master so in the material master this forecasting is been done so all these planning procedures reorder level reorder point safety stop all these planning procedure forecast based planning procedure reorder point planning procedure everything is assigned in material master in mr okay the third planning procedure is called time phased planning time phased now what is the time phased planning basically time phased planning basically means that uh, in certain cases vendor has certain periodicity which basically means the vendor supply the material only on the basis of certain periodicity so on the basis of certain periodicity we define that okay this material is only available on every um so this material is available on every wednesday so if this material is available on every wednesday so that basically means that when i'm defining how much material i need so basically i'm defining the material what i need for one week okay i i can have this material only on the 20th of every month So I can have this material only on the 20th of the month. So how much I need? So I need the material what I'm going to consume on every month till the 20th arrive. So that is where we have a time phased planning because in the time phased planning, material is only available on certain time frequency. Okay. So that is where time phased planning procedure come into the picture. Now we talked about planning procedures. So there are three planning procedures. We talked about rear to point planning. We talked about the forecast based planning. We talked about the time phase planning. And now we have something called lot sizing procedure. In the lot sizing procedure, it tells me how much I need. So lot sizing procedure tells me how much i need how much procedure tells me how i plan lot sizing tell me how much i need quantity in the lot sizing procedure there are some static there are static lot sizing procedure in the static lot sizing procedure there is a first is a fixed lot size second is a lot for lot third is a replenishment up to maximum stock now what is that basically means so in the fixed lot size a material is only available in certain fixed quantity for example when we are buying in the material it is coming in a box and because this material is coming in a box therefore i can only buy in the multiple of the box i can buy one box i can buy two box i can buy three box i can buy four box but i can only buy in the multiple of the boxes 
So when I'm buying, I buy in the multiple of boxes. Because box is a fixed lot size. Then we have a lot for lot. Lot for lot basically means exact quantity. So let's say I need, uh, I have a stock of 200, I need 1000, then how much I need? I need 800. So that is comes as a lot or lot. Then we have a, something called replenishment up to maximum stock. Now what is the example of a replenishment up to maximum stock level? That basically means it is being used like, for example, we have some kind of a container box, etc. Right? So if you have some kind of a container box, like a gasoline container, so when somebody comes to fix it, what happens? that it will basically come, the supply will come and it fix up the inventory level till the very top. So that is called replacement up to the maximum level. So for example, like your container or something like that, and during those containers, et cetera, you can have a replacement up to maximum stock. And then you have uh, in the bottom something called periodic load sizing procedure. Periodic load sizing procedure you define on the basis of periodicity. Now, what does that basically mean based upon periodicity? So daily load size. So daily load size basically means how much I need for it every day. Sometimes in a repeat manufacturing sector, how much you take, you take how much I need for a day. Weekly load size. How much I need? I need how much I need for consume for a week. So whatever I need to consume this material for a week, that become my quantity. Monthly lot size, how much I need? I need quantity which I can consume for a month. Lot size according to the flexible period man, means I need for 15 days. So what we have discussed in this, the continuous planning, first and foremost, is used for the purpose of, not for the purpose of production planning. It is not for the use for production function. Production planning is different. This is being used for the purpose of defining C class, D class, low value items, like a maintenance item, like a repair items, like operation item, packaging item, etc. Then we talked about that uh, there are three planning procedures. Planning procedure means how the planning happens, the calculation procedure. So in that we decide, we describe there's a reorder point planning, forecast based planning, time based planning. A lot of people use reorder point planning. So the one thing which is probably the most common and most often used is the reorder point planning procedure that is a method is VB. And then you use forecast based planning, which is VB. Then time phase planning, R1. Okay. And then we discuss what is there, and then we talk about the lot sizing procedure. Lot sizing procedure tells me that how much I need. So let's do some exercise to understand that. Okay. So let us do some exercise. So I want to do exercise, planning exercise. In the planning exercise, I want to take a planning procedure equals to BV, which is a reorder label planning. Reorder label and reorder point planning. And then I want to take lot sizing key equals to fixed lot.
So that is what we want to do it. For that, I want to create a material master with MRP views. Then run MRP. You can run MRP with the transaction code MD02, MD03. There are two transactions. You can evaluate. the result of MRP run that you can do with the transaction code MD04. Okay, make a note of these steps. Okay, make a note of these steps, please. Okay. So now let's create a material. So simple material, MM01. Raw material ROH. Hit enter. Base seated one purchasing. And I select a one preview. We select a one preview. Then we hit enter. It is a thousand and zero zero one. Hit enter. We can say it is a whatever. I can put any description. MRP material. We enter the unit of measure. Enter the material group. Enter the purchasing group. Now this is the MRP group. Now we were talking about here that we have a reorder point planning VV. Yeah? VV is a material point planning or MRP. Okay. And then uh, we have a fixed lot size. Okay. Fixed lot size is FX. So what we are doing is we are selecting FX fixed lot size and planning procedure VV. Now where is this? If I go to MRP procedure, if I go here, and we have uh, so many MRP procedures, and one of them is manual reorder point planning procedure. Okay. So VV is manual reorder point planning procedure. So we go to VV. So this is VV. Now, because it's manual, so I send the reorder point. So let us say the reorder point for this material is 1000. Just example. Who is the MRP controller? So, MRP controller is the person who is uh, responsible for doing MRP function. You can choose any value. Now, here we have a lot size. So, we have a different lot sizing key. So first we are selecting fixed lot size. So fixed lot size basically means when the material come into certain fixed lot size only. So I go to the drop down. And here we have a fixed lot size effects. And then we hit enter. So when we say fixed lot size, and the system asks you the, how much is the minimum lot size? The minimum lot size is 400 pieces. The material come in the 
box of 400, 400, 400. How much I need? I need 1,000. Reload point is 1,000. Manual load size is 400. And then we hit enter. Oh, fix load size, 400. So we enter, fix load size. Hit enter. Then we have here the plan delivery time means how many days it takes to deliver, etc. We can put it. So, you know, it is one day, two days, one of days. We can put it whatever days we want. It doesn't make a difference. Hit enter. Hit enter. Hit enter. Hit enter. And in the validation class, as we do, we go to 3000. Right. And we say don't eat. So we created a material. We make a note of the material. So this is the material we created. Okay. So this is the material we created. One three zero for it. So this is the material we created. And after creating this material. Now I want to go to logistic. I want to go to materials management. Here we have MRP. MRP. Planning. And here we can use single line, single line MD03. We go to MD03. MB03 is the planning procedure. Now here we have we put our material 13048. We put our plant. Okay. Here we have a create purchase requisition. Do you want to create purchase requisition? So here we have a two choices. So here we have a two choices. When I run MRP, we have two choices. Choice number one, should I create purchase requisition? Okay. Or another option is, should I create Plant order. So there are two choices. Okay. So it created a purchase requisition. So I create a plant order. You can do both. Now we know what is purchase requisition. What is plant order? So plant order is a document which can be created, which can be converted. To create purchase requisition or production order in case of make or buy. Decision. Now, what is the meaning of that statement? So, meaning of this statement basically is that sometimes we buy an item, sometimes we make an item. Sometimes we know where we're going to always purchase this item. Right? If we, we if we know that we're going to purchase this item, then we can directly create a purchase requisition. But if we don't know if we're going to purchase this item or not, then we have something called make or buy decision. Is my voice coming to you all?
Okay, can you guys hear me? Is my voice coming to you guys now? I dial back then. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. So not sure what happened, but anyways, we can continue now. So here I was giving the exercise which we're gonna do. So in this exercise, we talked about we're gonna use planning procedure VB. We're gonna use we use the lot size and key effect, which is fixed lot size. We create a material with MRP view. This is the material we created. We can run MRP. This is the transition code for MRP. And we were talking about when we run the MRP, then we have a two choices. In those two choices, we have an option of creating a, creating per se requisition directly or creating a planned order directly. So we have a two choices. So we can create a per se requisition or we can create a planned order. Okay. And then we can evaluate the result of MRP run. So here, if I go back, so this is uh, our MRP transaction, MD03, so I can use MD03 to run my, uh, I can run MRP, okay? Now I can put my material, I can put my plant, and then here, I can have a purchase requisition, so what I want, I say, I want one. So one basically means I want purchase requisition. So I'm telling system that create purchase requisition for me. And I want purchase requisition to be created. Okay. And then we hit enter. Then we hit enter. So we have to enter twice. So it is running MRP. So we got some message in the bottom. MRP carried out for material 13048 and plant 1000, and we don't know what happened. Right? So it says MRP exit out, but we don't know what happened. So we go back. Now, here we have something called evaluation, and here we have a transition code called MD04. In the transition code MD04, we can basically verify that what we want. We can go to MD04, we hit enter. Now in MD04, what we have? In MD04, we say that, okay, this material 13048, in plant 1000 and the system has automatically created three purchase requisition. This is one, this is two, this is three. Three purchase requisition. Now why, why three? Because I'd say my reorder level is 1000. And then I said that fixed lot size is 400. Means when I buy the material, it's come in the multiple of 400, 400, 400. So because I need 1,000 and the minimum, uh, the quantity fixed lot size is 400. So in order to do 400 and 400 and next at 400, because it cannot, it cannot divide, it cannot break the box. So we got 400, 400, and 400. Okay. So we get it three percent equation got created. If I double click on it, I can convert this purchase equation into purchase order also. Now, this is what we saw that how we run MRP and how MRP run can create purchase equation and how purchase equation can be created in this purchase order. So I go back, I go to MD03 again, In MD03, 
and uh, last time I put it one, and this time I put three, and then I run MRP again. I run MRP again. Again, system tell in the bottom the MRP carried out. Something happened. We don't know what happened. So we go back, and uh, we again go back to MB04. We put the material. We put the plant. And then we hit enter. Okay. And then now, see the planned order, planned order, planned order. So now system has created planned order. It is not created by acquisition. It has created a planned order. That is what it has created. Okay. Now, if I double click on it. then system takes me and it opens and create a purchase requisition there is a purchase requisition. you see the convert plant order to the purchase requisition and then we save it see the message in the bottom Plant order 36922 converted to purchase requisition 1001549. If I refresh, then I have a one purchase requisition and I have these two plant orders. If I double click on this purchase requisition, and then here I see purchase order. So now I can convert the purchase requisition into purchase order directly from here. It should take me to purchase order screen. Now it takes me to the purchase order screen. I put my purchase organization. I can select my vendor. I can enter my price. I got a green light and we save it. You want to save? Yes. I save it. Okay. So see the message in the bottom. The standard PO created under the number 4500. If I refresh it, now I create a purchase order. This is the purchase order. Okay. So now what we did? We evaluated MRP, then we run MRP, we created plant order, then we converted plant order to purchase requisition, and then we converted Purchase requisition to purchase order. Okay. So we created. Now this is the whole end-to-end -end MRP cycle. Now I want to do one more iteration. So what what I want to do here is so I want to do one more cycle. So we took a planning procedure VV, right? Lot sizing key, we took FX, but this time I want to take EX which is basically means lot 
for lot okay lot for lot so it's lot for lot same thing we want to create a material with mrp view i want to run a mrp i want to evaluate the result the same thing as we did before right okay so now we go to material master so let's go to material ml01 we get a material hit enter we select mrp 1234 views hit enter hit enter We select a MRV material. We go to a base unit measure. The same stuff. We hit enter. We go to purchasing uh, group. Hit enter. Now in MRV type. we select the mrp same or manual read upon planning we select uh, mrp same again 1000 mrp controller anybody then make a difference 000 in the lot size in key last time i selected fx this time i want to select ex ex is lot for lot Lot for lot. Then we hit enter. Then here we have a plant delivery time. Two days. Then we hit enter. Hit enter. Hit enter. Hit enter. And then we put a valuation class. And we put a price. And then we sell. Okay. So we create another material. But in this material, we have a different lot sizing procedure. This time, we have a lot for lot. Everything else is same. So in this material, in the last material, everything is same except here we have uh, this fixed lot size, and here we have lot for lot. Other things are same. Quantity same, everything is same. So we create material also. Now I want to go and run MRP. So again, I go back to MB03. I want to create, let us say, purchase requisition. I don't want to create as I select one because I want to create purchase requisition. I hit enter and I hit enter again. So I enter twice. so mrp carried out okay what happened with mrp so for that i go to md04 now when i go to md04 when i hit enter here and what we see we have purchase requisition 100044496 and it is for 1 thousand dollars so now there is only one purchase requisition it's not three last time we had three this time we had only one because lot for lot there is no fixed constraint i need 1000 system created one purchase requisition for 1000 okay. so that is how lot for lot works we create a lot for lot okay. now if i want to convert into purchase order i go to purchase order i go to vendor enter my purchase organization enter my price 
and then we save it. We get a purchase order. We save it. And if I refresh, then system create a purchase order. So purchase order got created. Okay. So that is how this whole thing works. Okay. So now we have done two iterations. So I've done, uh, you can try others also. You can say like this, Lord key, that Lord key. The steps are safe. We did two iterations. And uh, if you want uh, other iterations, so you can do other iterations as well. So same steps. In the material master, you send the procedure, you put a lot of key, you run, and then you can see what actually happened with that. Okay. So, so it will create. So now I want to do one more exercise. So I want to go to MM01. I select my MRP1234 views and I also select my forecasting view and I hit enter. So now I hit enter. Okay. And then I select. Enter. Enter my purchasing group. Hit enter. Now here we have MRP type. So if I go to drop down and I select MRP type VV. So if we see here in our uh, material, we have MRP type. Forecast based planning. So here we have forecast based planning. Hit enter. We enter the plan delivery time. Schedule margin key, if uh, in the case of production, if you want certain material. Which is uh, select any value from drop down. So zero zero one, which basically means how much is the float time. Okay. Now we come to the forecast view. Now here is the forecast view. So in the forecast view, we select the period indicator. M. So I want to do, for example, weekly. You can choose weekly, monthly. How much the forecast period? How many period you wanna buy? So 60, it says 60, or basically means a lot of period, lot of uh, month. So I don't want 60. So let's say I want to do six. How many more forecasts in the future you wanna do? I said I wanna do for four. So four period in the future I wanna take. 
and then here we have a conjunction value. I select conjunction value, and then we can put what is my conjunction. So I need uh, this week. Uh, I can post my conjunction. Whatever my conjunction was. Hit enter. Okay. We come back. So this is the conjunction value. Then we go to. We can see the forecast value. This so system tells me one, two, three, four, because we have select four week to be forecast for the future. Okay. We enter six. We want four in the future. I go to execute forecast. When I go to execute forecast, so do you want to start from 720? Which date you want to start? So I say yeah, start from this period. Oh, I want actually week indicator. So now in the week indicator system, say which date you want to start. I say start from this date. Enter the historical data because I changed the period. So you, need, you can enter the data again. So now if you see this is the week wide. Week 29, 28, 27, 29. So this is the week 29. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We go back because I change to the weekly. Then I execute forecast. Which date you want to start? Do you want to start with the week 29 or 23rd? Because current week is 29. I said, okay, start with the current week. Now here we have a different model. I want constant model. And I say forecast, forecast. Our system tells me that in this uh, situation, we require so what system saying that uh, week 29, week 30, week 31, 32, four weeks because we select four weeks. My requirement is 104, 104, 104, 104. So I, this is the quantity which is required and which is being forecasted. Okay. So that is a forecasted time by the system based upon past conjunction value. Okay. I said, okay, hit enter, hit enter. Hit enter, hit enter, put a valuation class 3000, standard price, and then we set it. So, this is the material. I make a note of the material. And after putting that, I run my MRP, MD03. Do I want purchase requisition? Yes, hit enter. And MRP carried out. Okay, what happened? So we go to MD04. I go to MD04. Hit enter. Now here system tells me that for this week, for this week, and this week, system has created purchase requisition, one purchase requisition, another purchase requisition, another purchase requisition. In the same way, I can double click on my purchase requisition, I can convert these purchase requisition 
into my purchase order. Hit enter. Hit enter. And then we save it. So we converted our purchase requisition into, and then we save it. And if I save it, we got a purchase order. So what we did? So we here we created the so we planning exercise. So we did the planning exercise using forecasting. So what we did, we created a material with following. What we did in that uh, we assigned planning procedure VV then. Assign planning procedure. We select a forecasting view and uh, we run forecasting in material using conjunction history. Then we did uh, we did MRP run, which is MD03. Then we evaluated MRP result, and then we converted purchase requisition into purchase hours. Okay. So this is the exercise for forecasting. So these are the three exercises which we did today. Okay. So, well, this is what um, I wanted to do today. Can you run MRP for internal plan? Yeah, you can do that as well. Okay, so these are uh, different MRP uh, exercise. Then I'm stopping here, and we will. So and thank you. So I'm stopping the class, and I'm finishing the class today. Thank you all. Thank you guys. So this was another topic left and we have finished this topic as well. Thank you, please take care and please be in touch. Thank you.